I'm not uh, really on that bandwagon that everything is going to be green. I mean, with the snowstorm we had, you had people stuck out there in those electric cars, they're in trouble. But I am absolutely for saving our environment. The wind doesn't always blow and sun doesn't always shine, so green energy isn't always reliable. One only has to look at California and Texas, states that pay some of the highest energy rates in the country and suffer from power shortages, usually at peak temperatures when power is needed most. Yet despite the overwhelming evidence that we're not ready to turn off fossil fuels, President Biden is demanding that the national electricity grid run on carbon-free power by 2035, and he's force-feeding the transition with regulation, subsidies and mandates. We fully expect you know, a massive expansion of wind and solar, and we're for that. But to complement that wind and solar, if, if we're going to shut off the fossil sources over time, We really need a source like nuclear that's emission-free and that's running 24-7. Kemera is a small town in Wyoming which for more than 100 years has relied on coal. That's scheduled to stop in 2025 to be replaced by a reactor project from TerraPower, a company backed by Bill Gates costing around $4 billion, with half the money coming from the US Department of Energy's Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program according to CNBC. Earlier this year, the Associated Press visited the site. Just like in a coal plant where you'd have combustion, instead we have fission creating the heat. And so we have to remove the heat from the fuel. And the way we remove the heat from the fuel is with liquid sodium. TerraPower utilizes natrium technology, which the company describes as pairing an advanced reactor with a molten salt system for energy storage and we can heat the sodium up in here, we can actually see what that process would look like. We think sodium is really a superior coolant. It has great attributes for efficiency and for for keeping the reactor safe. To help visualize the process, a simple animatic on the company's YouTube page demonstrates how the natrium reactor creates heat, which is used to increase the temperature of molten salt, then deposited in a hot salt storage tank. Then, as TerraPower puts it, operators working independently from the reactor can use the heat to generate electricity immediately or reserve that energy for later. The idea being that when there are dips in electricity from less reliable solar and wind power, TerraPower's salt heat battery will allow the plant to ramp up energy production on demand. Today's reactors are safe, but uh, natrium is that next level of, of safety um, doesn't rely on any outside sources of power to keep the reactor safe, you know, following some unexpected event. The Associated Press reports that Russia has been using such technology commercially since 2016. Some people call it the octopus. Here, footage published last year of Russia's BN-800 sodium-cooled reactor. These are sodium pipelines on the reactor's cap. The reactor itself is 16 meters below. Before TerraPower can build the plant, it has to submit its test research to the government's energy department. But while nuclear power doesn't generate carbon dioxide emissions, some scientists and liberal activists continue to push back against nuclear. Well, there's no plan for disposal of the waste from new reactors uh, any more than there is a plan for disposal of the waste from the existing reactors. Nevada politicians so far have blocked the Energy Department's plan to store nuclear waste at Yucca Mountain in that state. But if climate change is an existential threat to human existence as we know it, as Mr Biden says, nuclear power may have to be a part of the transition from fossil fuels. The Terra Power plant will be a test of that proposition. For sure, today's reactors produce used nuclear fuel that needs to be managed closely But if you look at the volume of used nuclear fuel from about 100 reactors operating for decades, and you put all of that used fuel in one place, it could fit on a football field 10 meters deep. You know, so compare that to the amount of carbon emissions you would have faced from providing 20% of the nation's electricity for, for decades. And, you know, you can see where kind of the sustainability argument is for nuclear.